Man, it is so weird for me to print books or anything on eight and a half by 11. It's just so foreign, but because of this paper debacle, I'm forced to do it to try and make my larger sheets last longer. But uh, thank goodness I don't have clicks on these machines because I would be paying double to print them. Speaking of, I've been checking paper inventory at my local supplier basically on a daily basis because paper can come and be sold in one day. Last week, I bought a bunch of 12 by 18, 60 pound text. And uh, in the morning, they had a, a million sheets in stock. The end of the day, nothing. So as a result, I've been trying to print more things on eight and a half by 11 that could be. Uh, and one of it is books, which is kind of a bummer. I like to print that on an oversize and trim it to eight and a half by 11, the final size book. But a lot of books now, I'm doing a final size just a little bit less than eight and a half by 11. Do what you gotta do. I've also noticed that I can basically only get cut sheets, like dig digital sizes of paper, like 12, 18, 13, 19, 11, 17, eight and a half by 11. I can't hardly get any folio sheets, like, or 17 and a half by 22 and a half, uh, 25 by 38. I don't know if other people are having that problem, but unless that stuff is just getting sold faster yet than the, than the other sheets, but I would really like to have some of those bigger sheets. Okay, I'm back, my helper, Ezra. We're getting ready to cut a book apart it pains me every once in a while I need to cut a book apart to scan it in uh, and it's just so much faster and you get a better quality result if you can cut the spine of a book off and then scan flat sheets of paper because whenever you're trying to turn a page and open a book up and lay it flat you always have kind of a, de a degraded area and the thing is, is with this book as well the text goes right on into the gutter so we don't have a lot to work with but it hurts me a little bit to cut a good hardcover book apart or even a soft cover book so here's the uh the end sheet here and it's a printed end sheet so what i'm gonna have to do is take a knife and cut the book block out of the case and the uh the reinforcement that goes uh, between the book block and the case. Uh, once I cut it out, then we'll have to put it in the cutter and trim off the spine. Uh, and you'll easily be able to see that this has sewn signatures, uh, which is really the best way to bind a book for long-term durability. So this uh, cloth reinforcement, it's on the other side of this craft paper here. Um, I've seen it called many things. It's kind of like a cheese cloth. Uh, I've seen it called muslin, but it's, uh, I guess the technical term is a super. And uh, it extends beyond the book block and then gets glued down in underneath here. And it goes you can feel probably about a half an inch in and that's what really gives the book block uh, support to the case and holds it together um, here's a good example too of a headband uh, the headband is purely cosmetic sometimes uh, I see books now hardcover books that don't have a headband 
Uh, and actually the hardcover books that I was making, I'm not putting headbands on. Um, personally, I like a headband, uh, but it doesn't do anything but look nice. Uh, nowadays, anyways. I'm assuming that back in the day, uh, it, it had maybe more of a structural purpose uh, when you had a hand-sewn signature. But nowadays, it's just taped on there to look nice. So now we have a sewn book block and the case. Now the next step is to cut uh, this sewn, and you can see here the sewn signatures. Uh, they're probably maybe 16 page signatures, uh, all sewn together. Uh, the tricky thing is if you just put this in the cutter, uh, because this book was rounded, uh, you can't just necessarily cut this off. Uh, and that's because the text goes right on into the gutter. Uh, so in this case, sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut the book block in half or thirds or quarters uh, and then individually just cut off as little as I possibly can to get the, uh, the sewn fold out of there. Uh, and, then, and then I'll have just free sheets that I can run through the scanner. And just to let you know, when I was using a knife, and when I'm using the cutter, the little guy, he's okay. Nowhere near anything. Now, these are sewn together, but you're also gonna get a little bit of glue because after the signatures are sewn together, that backing material, which is either that uh, muslin cloth or sometimes I see paper used, is glued and uh, that kind of locks up the stitching and just helps out create a better bind. As you can see, this book is nowhere close to falling apart, which is good. So now that I have, I just have two, oh good, here's a good example too. Uh, so signatures uh, before they're sewn together, uh, when they're printed, they often put a block right where the sewn uh, stitch goes. Uh, and that's so that at a glance, you can look at a book block and there's gonna be a black dot on each signature all the way down. And you can see that they're in order uh, because the last thing you wanna do is uh, stitch your signatures together in the incorrect order. Well, that, that might actually be enough. So you know you got enough of it at all if you can fan apart the pages individually. Oh man, I gotta take less off. I almost cut that text off. And that's still kind of tipped to the end sheet. By the way, when you take an end sheet and glue it to the book block, that's called tipping. I got lucky. That was way too close. But that should be good. And this last sheet, I'll just have to... I'll either just kind of pull it off by hand. Are you excited about cutting books apart? Yeah. You like making books. That's more fun than cutting them apart. Okay, so back in the day, I do have a tabletop Fujitsu scanner, which is awesome, but it's old. It's getting to be whew, maybe 15 years old. So this scanner is actually what I've been using 
primarily to scan in books and other stuff like artwork. I have some artwork here that I need to scan in. Um, but this is going to be a little tricky because uh, some pages should be scanned in as a grayscale page. Any page that would have a grayscale image. But the text isn't going to look good on a grayscale scan. In order to get the text to look nice, you need to scan it in as black and white. But if you scan in the, this page as black and white, the images look bad. So uh, this book uh, is probably going to get reproduced uh, the way it is, or else um, it's going to get redesigned into a new book. Uh, not exactly sure what the customer is going to decide yet. Uh, I definitely recommend that. Uh, Unless your book is just text and you can do the whole thing as black and white, uh, it gets very time consuming to uh, scan in uh, grayscale images separately and then adjust levels and de-screen uh, and de-skew and everything. Um, but there is some software out there that can, uh, that can speed that up. Uh, but where like the software I have, I use uh, Elan, uh, and they don't even make that anymore, so you can't even get it. Um, but So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this whole thing as a black and white image uh, and save it as a PDF, and then I'm going to scan this whole thing as grayscale and save that as a PDF, and then we can work from both. Um, in a situation like this, I definitely recommend that uh, if at all possible, you just retype the document and scan in each photo and basically redesign the whole book. And that will give you the best quality. And it's not going to look like a scanned in book. Whenever you pick up a book that's been scanned in, you can tell. Well, at least I can. And I'm sure there's tons of other printers and people out there that can as well. Uh, it just doesn't give as good of a quality. Every once in a while, you can actually improve quality. Uh, if, if you have a book where like uh, the threshold of an image is like all gray, there's no whites or blacks, you can clean that stuff up. But for the most part, you lose quality. All right, push the start button. Hey, look down here. See that blue one? Oh yeah, that's scanning kind of nice, isn't it? Okay, the black and white scan was done, uh, and it stopped two or three times because of the gloss. Uh, I could actually probably just clean that roller, the feed roller, and it would go better. But now we got to do grayscale. Uh, I'm just going to change it to 300 dpi and gray and I have a custom 9 by 12 setting on there and then we'll be done oh, that's faster man I, I can't wait to get back into the swing of things of posting a video every week for you guys um, I will get there uh, I enjoy so much uh, the camaraderie and learning, and I got some good ideas for upcoming videos on, you know, should I start a printing business or should I buy a business and some other things like that. There are tons of people that ask me questions about things like that all the time, and there are other questions people give me that I just cannot answer in a comment. I need to put a lot more time into it, but time is something I don't really have right now. I'm only a couple days away from the end of the month and I'm eager to tally up my, my click counts uh, because I've been printing color books on both of these almost all week, every day on the 1200. And we're running the Canon too. Uh, ran 200 books through that the other day. Uh, and this has been running as well because the other machines are running long jobs. So it has been 85 degrees in here every day last week it is hot because everything's running and we're perfect binding and laminating at the same time but uh it's all good uh hopefully uh i can
put a little bit more time into recording some videos and then also editing them. But thanks for watching and thanks for bearing with me here as I try and get a, a plan together uh, to get some more videos out there. So take care, enjoy the long weekend if you're in the United States, and uh, we'll see you next time.